Hello everyone, it's Gladius. So in my previous video, we went over the major four factions for earning your reputation or renown with. If you haven't seen that yet and you're interested in those four reputations, go ahead and take a look at the description. I'll go ahead and link my guide in there. But in addition to those four major reputations, there's also a few minor reputations that you can't ignore either. These not only give customizations, unlocks for your dragon, uh, like cosmetic kind of stuff, toys, that kind of stuff, but also they give a great upgrade for your neck, cloak, and your ring as well. Now, these factions I'm talking about are the Cobalt Assembly and also Rathian and Sibelian equally. You don't have to farm out all three of these. Majorly, you want to pick one of the two, either Rathian or Sibelian, and then also you want to work on the Cobalt Assembly. Each of these are really easy to do, and they include a couple different paths to get there. So weeklies, grind quests, that kind of stuff. We're gonna go over all of it in the video ahead. Now, before we get into that, everyone, if you decide at the end of the video that this was helpful to you in some way, please heroic strike that like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with WoW content in the future, please slam the subscribe for more WoW content in the future. All right, let's get into it. If you head on over to this location on your map, you'll find the Cobalt Assembly reputation. You can talk to Zavin over here to get an idea of how to help the Cobalt Assembly. Basically, if you kill elite enemies in this area, they're gonna drop green and rare items called Wild Arcana. These items are automatically consumed when you pick them up to increase your reputation with the faction. So this means they won't appear in your bag, but don't worry, they're applied to your reputation as soon as you pick them up. If you talk to Zavin, you can also see an upgrade tree, or kind of like a talent tree. These are upgrades you can buy that help you be more effective in the Cobalt Assembly area. A couple standouts are, first of all, the first one, Cobalt Cutthroat, is going to help you stay alive when you're fighting these elite enemies. And then also the Cobalt Reputation is going to give you 30% boost as you're fighting these enemies. Absolutely grab these two for sure. The other ones help, not quite as powerful as those two that I mentioned. They all cost Dragon Isle supplies. If you head on over to Styes, right next to Zavin, uh, he's going to show you all the items you're able to get for the reputation. He sells patterns and recipes as well as cosmetics, but what stands out though is that he has these really great rings that you can get. Each of them are item level 389, and there's one for tanking, there's one for healing, and there's also one for damage as well. These are unique, so you're not able to double dip on these upgrades. As you fight the elite mobs in the Cobalt Assembly area, you're going to notice these interactable orbs are going to drop. If you interact with these, you're going to get a set of upgrades that you're able to empower your character with while you're in the Cobalt Assembly area. Upon leaving the area, you're going to lose these buffs. Each of them only lasts about five minutes, and note that some of them, or a lot of them really, do stack. I didn't realize this until halfway through my grind and it really helps a lot. Some of these, <clears throat> some of the upgrades have really wacky effects like opening up your map turns into a bomb and all that kind of stuff. So try out some of the fun ones as well, but definitely check out the ones that stack because that's going to help you cut down your grind time by quite a bit. It's also important to note that if you die while you're in the Cobalt Assembly area with all these empowered effects, you will lose them and you'll have to grind them out again. It doesn't take a really long time, but once you get like a whole bunch of them, it does kind of suck to lose them all. Something to notice on the far right side, it says that you're able to, sometimes you're going to get an option on the far right side that says it will refresh all of the Cobalt abilities. This is really nice and shouldn't be overlooked because if you stack on a whole bunch of these empowerments, you can refresh their timers by clicking this one and it's going to turn every single upgrade and empowerment you have, turn the time back to five minutes. So you're able to really get a long list of empowerments by using this every so often to keep those, keep those at max duration. Just a word of caution, if you do get the fire one, the one that, that has like a fire boot on it, um, that one is going to damage you as well. So it creates a fire trail or fire pools expanding below you every so often while you fight. It does great damage to your enemies. However, it also damages you and your party. So this could lead to you losing all of your empowerments. They do have a revival buff though. So you could just pick up the revival buff if you're going to look at doing the blazing boots one. But I suggest maybe skipping that one. Especially if you're a melee character and you don't really have a choice but to stand in the pools. I think that's everything for the Cobalt Assembly. If I missed anything, let me know in the comment section below. Let's head over to Rathian and Sibelian in the Obsidian Citadel. There's two reputations in the Obsidian Citadel that are pretty much mirror images of each other. 
That is that they both gain reputation the same way and they also offer, they offer the same gear upgrades, but they offer different cosmetics. So what that means is that players that are just interested in player power rewards can have a jumping off point where they don't have to farm out the other reputation. They can kind of choose one and stick to it. Now these two reputations are Sibelian and Rathian. You can see here in my reputation window that they both have their own separate reputation. Now, players that played way back when Scryers and Aldors and there were a couple of there was like a fork in the road where you had to choose one faction and stick to it. Choosing one faction excluded you from gaining reputation with the other faction and progress in one would detract from the other. This is not the case with Sibelian and Rathian. They're actually you can get to the sixth level of both of these. But again, if you're just interested in gear rewards, you really don't have to go back and do the other one, unless you wanted to unlock the cosmetics that are only with the other faction. All right, so each week, you're gonna be able to see a, an elite world quest called Allegiance to One. You just have to choose either Sibelian or Rathian to pledge your allegiance to. This may seem like a really big fork in the road, but again, the gear rewards are the same. It's just a matter of which cosmetics you might be interested in. You can take a look at the quartermasters just position right in front of their respective faction leader and see if which cosmetics might be more interested to you. If you don't really care about cosmetics, just pick one and stick to it. The fastest way to get to the reputation level is to keep choosing the same character. So I'm gonna walk over and talk with Sibelian and by simply clicking this button here and then saying loyalty to Sibelian, I'm gonna be able to complete world quests and special weekly quests that are only available to if I click on Sibelian. Likewise, if I selected Rathian instead, then I would get to do exclusive quests just for uh, Rathian. Now, it's important to note that there's gonna be quests for both characters each week. Now, let's talk about the weeklies you have to do. They're a pretty standard affair. They're gonna be your usual killing quests, collecting quests, and all that kind of stuff. With one key difference. As you're fighting the Jaredin and other elite mobs around the area, you're gonna collect key fragments and key frames. You can use these to be able to put the keys together. Simply, when you've collected 30 key fragments and three key frames, right click on either one, and then you'll start assembling a key. Once the key is assembled, you're able to give it to one of the characters in the area. Four choices for this. You can give it to Sibelian, Rathian, Forge Master Basentis, and hold on, I gotta check this guy's name. And Morchok? I'm not sh completely sure. I've never given keys to this guy, but I just saw him sitting over here. You're gonna see a bar next to each one of these turn-in points where you're able to give the character the key. After that many keys are turned into that turn-in point, a special event is gonna happen. A rare is gonna spawn, and then you're able to kill it for some extra reputation. Turning in that key is gonna give you 250 reputation towards the character that is in charge of that turn-in point. So for example, if I turn in a key to Sibelian, I get 250 reputation to Sibelian. If I turn it into Rathian, I'll get 250 points towards Rathian. If you turn it into Forge Master Basentis, you're gonna get 100 for each of them. If you give a key over to Iggy's the Believer or Morchok, whatever that character's name was, you're gonna get also 100 points with Rathian and Sibelian. And these are not just your keys, they're anybody's keys. So you can hang out in the area and wait for enough keys to be turned in. And then when you hear a quest go off or a world quest indicator, go ahead and head on over and complete it because that's gonna help you get a boost of reputation towards the faction that, towards one of the factions. Now my rotation, what I like to do, I like to head on over to where Sibelian's standing and I wanna accept all of the quests. This is the same for Rathian too. You wanna to collect all the quests all over here. So now it's important to know that with Sibelian, um, or when you interact with Sibelian or Rathian, if you click on the quest and then you hit continue and then you complete the quest, it's going to take the key. Okay. So you want to make sure you're giving it to the right character who you want to give it to. So there we go. I just completed that one. And I actually started this quest for everyone because I turned in the last key of 20. So just to show you what that rare event looks like is uh, you just head on out. And I have, this is why I always say to keep rare scanner on because you're able to see on your map and it gives you an indicator on when a character spawns. I'll put a link to the description on 
on rare scanner. It's really helpful in Dragonflight especially because there's so many rares that are important to your character's progression. So for the Sibelian event, it's as simple as a dragon flies down on this bridge over here and you just fight it with everybody. There's going to be a lot of people usually grinding the reputations and then it'll die very shortly and then you'll get your boost of reputation and you'll also get or you'll get some drops from the rare of course. Not too bad. Now, when we're talking about the other quests that you're able to accept, and again, make sure you stop off at both Sibelian and Rathian. I'm headed over to Rathian right now to go grab all of Rathian's quests. It's important to know that as your reputation improves and your item level gets higher, it's either the reputation or item level improvements on your character that's gonna make these rewards get better and better each time. For example, the first time I did this, I did not get 385 item level feet. So it's useful to keep coming back to these since they do scale with your progression. And also you get a pretty nice trinket too. As a general strategy for completing this reputation, and well, both reputations, come in here with a rare scanner add-on and just start fighting the Jaradin in the area. Start collecting these key fragments and keyframes. And while you're doing it, keep an eye out for all of the world events that are gonna spawn from other people farming this stuff as well. Now, something to note is that there's not as many players doing this as there was when the expansion first came out. If you find that on your server, there's not a whole lot of people doing this anymore, go ahead and sign up for the group finder. Take a look and find a group that's doing it. Cause there's people out there, they just might be on a different server or shard or something like that. And the bigger group you're in, it's just gonna help you get through it a lot faster. Now, just to help anyone else that's run into this as well, I've been wanting to tell people about this for a while. There's a character over here. I think it's the Scalp Rippers. The Scalp Rippers, they're gonna cast a spell called Deathless Rage. What that's gonna do is that you're gonna notice the character is gonna grow in size, get a lot larger. And you'll notice you'll start doing no damage to them. Like you, your hits are gonna go down to like 25 damage per hit. And it's important to know that that buff that he puts on himself is not gonna fall off unless he stops auto attacking. So if you're playing a character that is capable of taunting, it's worth walking away from the mob, taunting it so that the mob can't attack anybody for a couple seconds. And then once the buff falls off, you'll be able to kill him again. You're gonna be spending a lot of time over here. So you're gonna see plenty of rares that pop up and it is part of the quest, the weekly quest to kill two rares. But on top of it, remember, you can kill these as many times as you want to get the reputation bonus. The loot is only gonna be once per day. That was something that was nerfed shortly after launch. You can only get loot from the rares once per day per rare. But keep an eye out for each of them because there's quite a few in the area and they drop some pretty nice stuff. I want to give a shout out to Rosor Forge Smash. I talked about him in my Black Dragon Touched Hammer Guide, but the plans he drops are very good for blacksmiths. So if you're a blacksmith, hang out in the area, take a look for this guy when he comes out and drop everything you're doing. You want that hammer. And if you're curious about how to get your dragon touched hammer and how to go about making one, take a look at my guide linked in the card above and then also in the description. Now this farm gets even better when there's an elemental storm going on in the area. That also counts for the cobalt assembly as well. When there's a storm in the area, you're also gonna get the elemental overload. And if you're curious about what to use that for, you can... I also have a guide on that too. I'll link in the description. Now, after completing all the weekly quests, you can either Finish off the reputation more quickly by just farming out the keys. And again, you can get into some pretty big groups for this where you pull a bunch of monsters and you can really make some progress on it quickly. Or you can just wait for another set of weeklies the next week. If you're looking for time efficiency, then probably just waiting for your weeklies is, is the best way to go. If you really wanna crank it out quick and get that upgrade fast, then grind some keys and just turn them in again and again. I'm telling you, pick up that rare scanner add-on. One more thing to go over with Forge Master Vicentis is that if you turn in the quest, if he gets to his max amount of keys, he's gonna have a world quest for everyone to do. This is where you're gonna be able to equip some of these weapons that are gonna help give you a special effect that's gonna do a lot more damage and help you get through mobs a lot faster. For example, if you pick up his Dragon Lance, then you're able to do a Whirlwind attack that stuns all the characters and does a massive amount of damage. So if you're in a farming group, it might be worth getting Vicentis unlocked so you can do that world quest. Okay, once again, if that was helpful to you in some way, please rogue strike that like button and then slam the subscribe for more WoW content in the future.
Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.